Welcome everybody to Seoul, South Korea. I am Doa, with me is Monte Cristo, and today is the day that we find out the final seed from Korea going for the League of Legends Season 3 World Championships. Will it be SK Telecom or KT Rolster Bullets? We're gonna find out by the end of the night. It's pretty exciting, and of course, this is a rematch of a best of five from just one week ago, That's right. where we had these teams collide in the Champion Summer Grand Finals. SK Telecom managed to battle their way back from an 0-2 deficit to take the best of five yeah. in the final blind pick game in a pretty epic manner, so. Easily the most exciting finals that we've yeah. casted here in Korea for champions, and probably one of the most exciting finals in like league history, it was yes. amazing. <laughs> We've got a chance to see the exact same thing tonight, but let's kind of look at where these teams have been at throughout the week. SK Telecom has had a little bit of time off. They've had a little bit of time to prepare, but KT Bullets have been playing nonstop since Wednesday, a match every single night, and man, have they performed. Yeah, they have. They did lose that tiebreaker match on Wednesday, 2-1 to Frost, but after right. that, they slayed both CJ teams, 3-0, 3-0 through Blaze and Frost. The KT Rolster flags are out here. Yep. tonight but it's really an amazing series we have here coming in these teams are both red hot right now oh yeah man I, th I think it's honestly impossible to predict this match you really cannot say who's going to take this one they're both very even in skill they both have the same nerves going right now i mean you could say kt has a little bit of revenge in mind but i feel like any sort of little edge that you would normally give a team seeking revenge in this case is countered out by that maddening desire that sk telecom has to go to the world championships these teams want it so bad and here's some info about the world championships two million u.s dollars on the line overall for the prize pool in that tournament it's going to be awesome going to be a little bit later this month can't wait to watch those games absolutely and yes I, coming into tonight too i have to say that in my mind whoever wins this match tonight is probably one of the favorites to win the entire Easily. world championship both of these teams have just been on fire recently and there we go we can see the teams that are already qualified the chinese qualifiers going on right now actually yeah, that's right so we'll find out by the end of the weekend what two teams from china will be coming as you can see our other two teams from korea najin black sword and samsung Galaxy Ozone, that's right, that threw me off for a minute, but just announced today, MVP Ozone, the team's going over to Samsung, and Samsung has had a very successful eSports club in other games for a long time here in Korea, so don't worry, Dada and the rest of those guys are, are going to be well taken care of for Worlds, and uh, yeah, what a crazy, crazy World Championships we have coming up. The teams are really good. I mean, I'm really excited about seeing like Cloud9, Lemon Dogs, there's a lot of other teams from other regions that I'm looking forward to seeing too. It's gonna be a great tournament. And yes, so one of the most interesting things to steer the conversation back over to the match we're about to watch yeah. is we're in a different patch than last week. That's we're very true, on yeah. 3.10A with those big, really important Trinity Force buffs. Mm -hmm. And so actually, those buffs changed the, a lot of the champions that are being played right now dramatically. We've yeah. seen Ezreal and Corky played a lot more by score to very good effect. Uh, we're, we're starting to see more Jax and Aurelia picks and bans as well. We're having a return to these Trinity Force carry bruisers up in that top lane. And so it'll be interesting to see because also what we've seen are the KT Bullets start picking up that Ari Vi combo that beat them in the uh, in the finals yeah. from SK Telecom. So those may be hot picks tonight as well. You're absolutely right. There's our circuit points overall in Korea. You guys are well familiar with that list. None of it really actually matters at this point because we're down to the end. SK Telecom versus KT Bullets for that final spot at Worlds. And just to kind of continue our conversation we are having a moment ago, I think something really interesting that we've been seeing since this new patch is Zach just disappearing yes. in Korea. He lost his tenacity on his ult. It made, they made it a little bit tougher for him to pick up his blobs, I believe, too. And, yes. and Koreans have just stopped playing Zach. And you know, Doa, those were pretty important nerfs they uh, were, for Zach. But, but I feel that yeah. sometimes when we cast the Korean teams here in Korea, they tend to overemphasize nerfs and immediately just jettison champions. They and really do, yeah. I still think, of course, Zach is not as good as he was, but they didn't really change his kit at all. So his ability to, to initiate is still 
excellent. You and know, so he still has a lot of value in my mind. It's interesting because if you look at the history of esports in Korea and watch other games and other patches in those games as well, you see a similar trend where players will just drop certain strategies for a while after they get nerfed, even if it's not a big deal, and then pick them up later. But as you can see today, guys, a best of five, the fifth game, will be blind pick if we get to it. Same format as last week, and man, that was a great series going all the way to game number five. And maybe if we're very lucky, we'll get to see a Ryu versus Faker, Zed versus Zed rematch. I really want to see that. I would love to the see that again. The chances may be not quite as good, but you never know. Yeah, I agree. So it's it's all about the momentum here tonight. And of course, oh, yeah. KT Bullets coming off of six straight wins. But have they showed their strategy? And for SK Telecom, they probably anticipated to play the Bullets again tonight, but they haven't had that practice That's uh, right. in the booth. That's right, there they are. SK Telecom T1, the winners of OGN Champion Summer. That got them far enough to get a chance to compete today against the KT Bullets. And are they ready? I've got a feeling they are. Man, what a strong team this is. And let's talk about those finals just a little bit. So, KT Bullets in the first two games that they won used some really strategically inventive fast push compositions that kind of caught SK Telecom off guard. But then in game three, we saw them switch over to heavy pick and playmaking champions. And it's so interesting to see these two teams because both of them are perfect for the current pick, split push, fast push meta that we're seeing, where they shy away from 5v5 team fights, generally speaking. Yeah. But they're very different. KT rolls to bullets, very strategically sound, very inventive, uh, very hard to guess what they're going to be doing in picks and bans, and very smart about their pick and ban process, and very precise in terms of how they push lanes. SK Telecom, not so good at the objective control, but they make huge make plays. The plays. They make the plays. Yep. They play assassins. That guy right there, he makes the plays. Yeah, they play assassins, they invade your jungle, they pick you off really beautifully. And so when we saw SK Telecom switch over to those heavy assassin compositions, emphasizing picks using Vi, Ari, Zed, these champions, Shen to come help out, that's when SK Telecom really was shining and they beat KT Bullets by forcing skirmishes when KT Bullets wanted to push down towers. Yep, and there are the KT Bullets right there. A team that has just been on fire all week. Ryu already asleep in the booth, no surprise there. We'll wake him up when the match starts, don't worry. He's just like that. And then Insec on the end, of course. No someday today, Insec, you know, despite being a little bit under the weather, we've been told all week, a little bit sick actually, he has performed extremely well. There's the roster overall. Now, I feel like this is a good moment to talk to about Insect's champion pool in top lane. I mean, these new Trinity Force changes may be kind of forcing the popular champions in a direction that Insect may be a little bit uncomfortable in. I, I totally agree. I totally agree with you, Doa. And it's because we haven't seen him play in a meta where champions with these Trinity Force are strong. So yeah. do I think he can pick them up? Yes, but uh, that's something that Impact, who shares a lot of similar champions with Insect, will be struggling too. However, I feel that Impact has a few more weapons. He's got that really great Singe that he plays. We know he can carry on champions like Vladimir as well. Right. We've really never seen anything that from Insect besides Shen, Malphite, Zac, Jarvan, heavy initiation tanks, yep. uh, and Renekton as well. We said in the past couple days, but it's been mo his Renekton has been mostly pretty underwhelming. I would agree, and there he is on your screen right now. Insect, a lot depends on him. Has he been able to adapt with the patch? Are they ready today? That's a big question for KT Bullets. I mean, they have had no time at all to prepare for SK Telecom. Just between last night's match and now, that's it. Where SK Telecom has been able to watch KT all week, look for those subtle changes that they may have made since the finals. And we'll see how it ends up working out. A couple KT fans in the audience, quite a few I'd imagine. We're about to get into picks and bans for game number one. Here we go, guys. The best of five to decide the final spot for Worlds. And coming into these picks and bans, though, I gotta say, 
It's an incredibly hard match to call. It could go either way, but I do think yes. that the patch changes favor the KT Bullets just a little bit more because Score is so good at Ezreal and Corky, and Piglet primarily a Caitlyn and Vayne player. We saw some Blade of the Ruined King nerfs as well. Yeah. So this is going to change the champion pool. We already see that Caitlyn ban just like we did in every game of the finals. Yeah, you really do need to ban Caitlyn against Piglet if you have a chance. I mean, he's just way too good. I think coming into the finals, he was something like 12 and 2 on Caitlyn in champion summer before the grand finals yeah, you just can't let him play him. and actually the fresh band going down as well Maffa picking that up against Frost last night looked good too looked what do you think about good. this Kennen band well we know impact has always been a Kennen player as well um, and it I'm waiting to see what the rest of their team composition is before we make a call on that one because it has been traditionally one of Impact's better champions, but we haven't seen him really playing it in a while. And SK Telecom may be trying to take that Gragas away. Ryu on Gragas was one of the main reasons why they lost those first two games, and then it got banned out for most of the rest of the series. Yeah, so we'll see how Faker does. Now Zyra, a pick for Pumandu allows him to set up those picks very nicely with his E and his ultimate. And there is the Skorky. They take away Vi as well. Yeah, and I mean, Vi, Ari has been a very popular combination, but you can combine Vi with a lot of champions right now. She sets up skill shots, snares so easily with that ultimate. Well, the Vi-Shen combination, too, is guaranteed oh, entrance yeah. into a back line. So that's a very powerful pickup there if you want to tie up the damage dealers from SK Telecom. And there's Jarvan locked in for SKT. One more pick on their side before we send it over to KT for the final two picks. And who will it be? Now, Gragas has been a core of the KT Bullets because Ryu plays him in such a way that he pretty much just stays by himself for most of the game, poking down and slowly hold, like holding a lane until his team can group up and then he'll just toss the explosive cast, knock the enemy team off the turret and allow Score to whittle it down with oh. auto attacks. And Vayne picked up for Piglet. I mean, it is one of his other favorite champions, but you know, we'll see. Uh, this is gonna be really interesting, seeing Vayne played by Piglet, who's a great Vayne player, going up against Corky powered with that new Trinity Force. Yes, I think it's going to say a lot about yeah. the state of the game right now. And Ryu, he didn't play Fizz in the finals, but he has an astoundingly good Fizz this past week. Yeah. So it's been a champion he carried on quite hard. He went, I believe, 12-1-1 one, one in one of the games yesterday against Frost. And that's and what they're going to pick up. So. Yeah, and Sona, too. Yeah, powerful team composition coming out of the KT Bullets, but Gragas and Vayne, always a great combination. You throw that explosive cask in to disrupt the enemy. You pull someone close to Vayne with it, so she has that 1v1 situation where she can almost always win in a duel. You take someone down very quick, and the singe pick wouldn't surprise me at all for a little bit of fast pushing here from Impact. Yeah, and it's been such a popular way to try to shut down Shen early in the game as well, too. No shock at all to see the singe picked up by SK Telecom. They haven't locked it in yet, but I would imagine they're probably gonna go with this. Now, Piglet and Mondu have had a great season. Oh, yeah. And Score and Mafa this week have looked so strong. They only lost lane one time in their six games against both, both Frost and Blaze. And when you have this Fizz pick, it puts SK Telecom in an interesting situation because they can try and shut it down with a 2v1 lane, but you know that Score and Mafa are so good at getting that first turret if they're in that situation. So you either have to let Ryu hit a power spike faster by allowing him to farm, or you put yourself in danger of losing that first turret. It's, yeah. a, it's a tough conundrum, and KT Bullets put Frost in this very same pickle yesterday. Well, this matchup is so great between KT and SKT because you have on the one hand KT, who's strategically so good, so smart about what they do, how they tactically move around the map, and then you have SK Telecom that's the opposite, just playmaking, playmaking, but they're so good that they were able to beat KT in the finals. I think this is like probably one of the most exciting matchups in terms of team style we can get right now I couldn't agree more it's it's pretty awesome and we saw how effective both styles are in the current state of League of Legends right just a week ago it's really a treat to see this again and there we go our final lineup for game number one in the top lane Shen played by Insect Impact playing Sin down in the jungle Kakao on Vi Bengi on Jarvan the fourth in the mid lane Ryu on Fizz 
Baker on Gragas down to 80. Kerry Corky playing score this time, or vice versa, rather. And Piglet playing Bain and finally in support. Moff on Sona, Mondu on Zyra, and the game is loading up, guys. This is such a big game, too. The momentum is really going to be with the winners of this first game. The morale effects are gigantic. A ton of fans in the audience today. Glad you could join us, too. Here we go, guys. Game number one, SKT versus the KT Bullets. The battle for the final spot to World of Korea begins now. Battle apparently. That is Earth, right? That's the name of the Earth. Manatee. Earth, yes. right? Earth, right. Earth the Glad I got that right. SK <laughs> Telecom <laughs> versus <laughs> KT Bullets, game number one. <laughs> Here we go. And KT Bullets going for oh, a very defensive oh, formation. Oh. Piglet gonna walk into an Earth bush. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, he celebrates Earth Day every year. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> Cares well about played, the economy. Sir. Well played, sir. The economy, huh? Is that That's what right. Earth Day is about? Ecology, economy, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think a healthier planet will produce a healthier economy. There we go. See, I saved that one. <laughs> 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 That's a <great> <laughs> well, SKT coming into the opposing jungle, just getting down those forward wards. And this is interesting because we've seen more aggressive level ones from KT Bullets against Frost and Blaze, but a pretty passive start here this time around playing it safe, not getting those deep wards in. And they will be sending that Shen up to the top lane, it looks like. Now, we have seen Shen have a lot of problems over the last few weeks against Cinch players. Really players. difficult to deal with that dirty farming early on in the game. Yeah. Because Shen simply doesn't have very good wave clear. So it's easy to abuse that champion and either force jungle pressure to deal with him, or you just have to face tank minion waves and try and CS as best as you can. Is Vi like slicking her hair back with those giant robot hands? I'd be kind of worried to do that, like, like knock my own head off or something. Yeah. She likes to live dangerously, though. I guess so. All right, well, Vayne right. in the mid lane right now. And look at that. They were waiting to see where Fizz would be. And then immediately they had Piglet and Mondu yep. in between lanes, helping with that leash. And then coming up so they could deal with Ryu. Their immediate rotation, you see Score and Mafa doing much the same thing right there. And they really need this 2v2 situation. Well, that's kind of the risk with Fizz, right? Is I mean, you need him to have that really, really good early game to get wow. that power spike at the right time. They're gonna switch him right back down. Well, they it's learned their- hunt. Yeah, they learned their lesson. Frost decided it would be okay. Oh, okay. Uh, now they're going down, okay. Yeah, Frost decided it was going to be okay yeah. to just leave Ryu in a 1v1 situation, and then Ryu got 12 kills that game. So, yeah. not a good plan if you're SK Telecom. That's why we see both teams accepting the loss of experience, accepting the loss of gold, in order to get this preferential lane matchup. Now, it's hurt KT a little bit worse. You can see SK Telecom's oh. duo lane, the 100 acre lane, already hitting level two first. Yeah. And a lot of aggressive trading going on in this bot lane. Mandu very low, but getting score low as well. Ooh, that was a damaging phosphorus bomb, though he needs to be a little bit careful. I'd have to imagine that Mandu probably went for the masteries that are popular right now for aggressive supports in Korea, especially as I were going deep into that defensive tree for that extra ability to just kind of sit there and trade. Yeah, the, the popular masteries right now are, I, I believe it's um, 22 points in defense. Yeah. And you only spec four over into that utility tree. So. Yeah, and then one in exhaust in the yeah. attack one too, yeah. So, it's a bit of an interesting change, but because the reason oh. why they Oh, he got the root! Score very, very low! Condemns him away, gets the barrier out. And Piglet. This is quite surprising considering how dominant Score and Mafa have been in lane, but no kidding. you can see how much oh, hitting level two by. match. He's but going Bengi's down. Right, there. right there. Comes in, nice dodge with the QE combo. Wow. Really Look smart. Look at that now. reaction after the flag came down. Yeah. Immediately changing the direction on that Vault Breaker. Man, this is going to be a great series. It was a great series a week ago today, and 
It'll be a great series today, too. Well, last week there was about $80,000 on the line. Yeah. This week there's a chance at a million. There could be so. more money. Yeah. <laughs> Financially, this could be a much bigger match for both of these teams as, I mean, like we mentioned earlier, the team that wins this is going to be really a favorite to go quite deep in the World Championships, and that's a chance at a lot of money and a lot of fame. Well, Mafa here, you can see he's already out of mana. Uh, Impact coming back quickly up into that top lane, getting those two Doran's rings for just increased harassment and his ability to take down the minion waves faster. So to explain about these Zyra masteries a little bit more, right. um, the defensive masteries are important because Zyra can auto attack very effectively because she has a 625 auto attack range. So if you can sit there and trade auto attacks continuously with the opposing support at AD carry, and you have those defensive masteries to absorb some of those perhaps minion hits perhaps abilities that the other team might throw at you. You can really wear them down over time and come All out right. on top. Oh, Insect gets flipped away. He's gonna try to run. Can he make it out? This could be first blood taunting away. Will they catch him? Oh, nice flash. He misses the QE combo. Dodge it, but there's the flip. Insect in big trouble. He goes down. And first blood goes to Bengi and yes. SK Telecom. Got the flash out too, and that extra AP that he got from the Doran's rings on that first back early, deciding to go ahead and use his teleport to get back to the lane quite early on in this one, really paying off right yeah. there. Well, we talked about SKT making plays, and they're already doing just that. I mean, and not just in terms of kills. The CS lead already, 11 CS up for Piglet in that 2v2 with Mondu in the bot lane. And here comes by once again. Baker going to dodge. Does get caught a little bit. Take some of the damage over time right now. Kakao just yep. trying to help whittle down this big minion wave that Faker's managed to re score him off and heading back. And there Whoa. we go. Flash coming in from Faker. Ryu has to yeah. dodge. Thought he could maybe get that kill. Ryu, though, has to go back either way. And Faker should be able to stay in lane if he wants to. Bengi is there as well. And the lead in mid lane for Faker is just going to continue to grow at this point. And Ryu is already quite down in CS. And KT Bullets, they found themselves losing this bot lane um, because of the fact that the harassment win, Piglet and Mondu hit level two, it just turned into a really nice lead in lane for them. And if they hadn't rotated so aggressively, we may not have seen this Doha, but the KT Bullets said, no, we really need this phase on a 1v1, but it's not really working out there either. Faker yeah. doing a great job keeping Ryu off the waves. He's behind at CS as well. So SK Telecom playing this laning phase much better. Well, it's interesting because I feel like this instance for Fizz being played by Ryu this game is, is one of the reasons why we didn't see Fizz for a long, long time in Korea and that he does tend to be a bit of a risky champion to pick up. But here's an attempt at a blue steal coming in. Ryu and Kakao setting a uh, trap Faker. for Faker. Faker coming down. He's going to walk right in the middle of them. There's the ultimate from Vi coming in. Nice explosive cast. He escapes. But they will take the blue buff off of this because Piglet and Mondu have moved up to that top lane. They will get the blue steal. Ah, and they're going to go for possibly a dragon off of this as well. I think this is a great decision yeah. from the KT Bullets. They saw the AD, and this is one of the things that you can't let the Bullets do, is if they have any chance to take a dragon or a Baron, you better believe they're going to do it. Oh, yeah. And this is just what KT is so good at, is they're willing to make these little trades here and there, and if they get objectives out of it, they're happy. They're so good and getting gold leads over time with objectives. Yeah, and Insect going to have a bit of a rough time in this 1v2 now, yeah. and they're confident that Singed is powerful enough now that he's got that health crystal to absorb the damage coming out of Score and Mamba. And since they're a little bit behind, it makes sense. Kakao picks up the red and heads back to base. Insect trouble a little bit with this turret, and that's going to draw Ryu up to that lane. Yeah, that's right. And actually, Insect coming in. There we go. Come the waters on the Mondu. Doesn't hit him, though. Mondu backing off. He's getting very low, though. They'll get that kill. Ryu up against the wall, though. Piglet trying to chase the Zyra. Post that passive helps him out. There's the ultimate stand united. Will it be enough to save Ryu? Piglet diving deep. He has to back off. Bengi coming up as well. They couldn't quite finish off Ryu, so in the end, a clean kill. They get the stand United out, but nice play by KT. And you can see here, too, Insect didn't anticipate that this late switch would happen. Impact gets hit by Crescendo. Yeah, goodbye, Impact. And here comes Faker, though. He's going to try to get some damage on Mafa. He dodged Very the low. body slam. I can't believe it. What a juke. And Mafa still goes down. But the plays, man, the wow. plays from both of these guys.
Okay, but Insect right back into this one. Now, he didn't anticipate the lane swap either. You can see right now, he went back and picked up a Negatron Cloak. Yeah. So that's not helping him a whole lot uh, against all this damage coming out of Vayne. Not the best against Vayne, no. No, uh, so, and he loses the tower as well. If he had picked up some health, he may have been able to hold just a little bit more up there. Yeah. You know, KD, that dragon really keeping things from being a little bit more of a disturbing gold deficit at this point, as is, it's pretty even. Well, yeah, you can see Faker's total domination of Ryu here as well. Yeah. 76 to 39 CS, a pretty substantial lead. And Ryu's not getting any breaks either, but Kakao oh, may change yeah. that. Kakao coming in, he's got the ultimate up. There we go. Just completely taking apart Faker. He's trying to escape. Oh, Ryu manages to dodge the ultimate. Faker's not getting away from this one. Or is he? Oh, no, he's not. Barely at the end, Kakao comes in, but now the knockup from the Vi ultimate. Ryu taking out. Teleport coming down. No, not anymore. Kakao in a bit of trouble here. Impact stopped from teleporting up in that top lane. Yeah. Insect trying to run away now, though. Can he make it? Insect may really pay for this one. He's trying to get uh, out. Yeah, and look at that. He's they it. saved the flip so he couldn't get out for that. Oh, break flash a ton. And look at that. He will be chased over, though. Bengi coming in over the top. And Insect, yep, you're not living through this one. one. He just gives up and dies. <laughs> I guess so. He's like, well, I'll just die by the side so I don't clutter up the middle of the <laughs> river. So very considerate of Insect. Thank you. Baron doesn't like when bodies clutter up the Baron pit, so. Well, would you like it if you had to just look out at dead bodies all day, Dylan? No, well, sometimes they, like, fall into the hole that you're coming out of, oh, too. Oh, man. They're just impossible to get what, out of there. What a point. mess. Yeah, I mean, you can't vacuum it because it's all water. <laughs> so just a pain. Just a pain, Monte Cristo. Well, right. so far, we do have that pretty solid lead so far for SK Telecom, but, you know, one one objective will turn that around pretty quick here for the KT Bullets if they can manage to get one, but the That's play's the being made all across the map there in favor of SK, yep. and that was a bit of a questionable call, I think, an all-in. They over-pursued that. Kakao should have let him go and backed off. Instead, he decided to chase him with his ultimate, pick up the kill on Faker, but with the teleport there, they didn't really have a lot of uh, respect for the fact that Singe could come in. Yep. Uh, and Mondu and Piglet were just right there waiting to clean up afterwards. Exactly. Well, now we've got a bit of a 2v2 in the bot lane once again. CS, fairly even. Ryu gets pushed back with that explosive cast. And if you guys are wondering about score, he's been building um, Trinity Force into Last Whisper to do a lot of burst damage here, and it's been a very effective build on both Corky and Ezreal. And typically, he then starts picking up some more damage after that in Infinity Edge, normally what he likes to buy. So it's a little bit of a new style now that these Trinity Force carries are back in vogue. Yep. And Faker. Oh, Faker, yeah, coming in. Oh, but there's the ultimate. Kakao trying to come in. Faker flashing away. Can he make it? There's the ultimate from Kakao. I don't know. Faker gets the kill on Ryu. They're going to trade 1-1, one, one, but hey, Faker made something out of it. Not bad at all. But Ryu is not the one getting these kills, Noah. He yeah. desperately needs that gold to finish his Lich Bane so he can actually be more of a presence in this game. He's been held and back instead, quite a bit. Yeah, Kakao keeps getting him. Yes, that's going to help because Kakao will probably be able to get a faster Aegis, uh, which against the champions like Singed and, and Gragas with their AoE magic damage is very important, but right. they need Ryu to carry well, here. Well, flipping lessons for the ninja from Impact. Insect needs to back off again. Ninjas only want to flip when they are in control of the flipping, you know? That's a, that's a ninja preference, I've, <laughs> I've been told. Ninjas did you, did you learn that in ninja school? I did. I was training with Raz al Ghul for a little while, you know? I mean, League of Whatever and all that. <laughs> and that. Then that Bruce Wayne guy came and messed everything up. Thanks a lot, Batman. <laughs> and that's why I'm not a ninja today, so there you go. Now I... Cast League of Legends. <laughs> There's Impact trying to harass the blue buff here. Yeah. And looks like Ryu and Kakao should be able to take this one. Yeah, they get it. No problem. And that does allow Bengi and Faker, though, to put some pressure onto this mid lane turret. And it looks like we may have Ryu and Kakao coming in. Do they want to fight this? Not quite. Yeah. Save that turret. There's a lot of burden on Kakao right now, though. Uh, and because oh, yeah. of the, the deaths that have happened in lane two, he's actually picked up a substantial amount of lane farm this game. Um, and experience. You'll notice he's two levels up on Bengi right now, yeah. simply because of all of the empty lane farm and uh, kills that he's managed to acquire so far. Uh, and that's, it's, there's a lot of burden on him to make this gold lead that he has useful as fast as possible. SK Telecom 
Going for that dragon though, right as it spawns. Now Stand United is up, Insect is sitting there by himself. But oh, here's the dragon, Kakao, thinking about coming into the queue, he's gonna try to steal it, can he do it? Meanwhile, Mafa locked up in the back lines, dragon still alive here. Bengi, very low, nice QE combo coming in. Kakao gets taken, now Ryu gets that kill. Piglet trying to get away from the fight, good crescendo over the top from KT. Score chasing in. Ryu gets the double kill. That's what he's been looking for. Mafa flashes over the wall, tries to get away. Mandu trying to get a position to lock up. Score, can he get away though? What's the Valkyrie cooldown like? Score trying to get that kill to Faker. Has to give up, has to get taken down. And so two for two in the end, and Dragon survives the entire affair. Well, that was a bit risky for the KT Bullets, and they were lucky to get out of it when they did. Score didn't have that much mana going into that fight, and by the end, he was just entirely out. No yeah. way that he was going to escape, and SK Telecom will turn this into a quick turret kill and increase that gold lead just a smidgen. Yep, still a very even game, but now two turrets to zero for SK Telecom. They denied that second dragon for KT, so, so far, SKT just a little bit in the lead in game number one. Well, we're about to see Dragon oh, fight Redux, fight. but Kakao, what was so successful for KT was Kakao and Insect being able to get into the back lines with their ult, and they're not going to have those available this time around. Yeah, SKT setting up for a Dragon. Yeah, meanwhile, there's shorter ult cooldowns on the champions from SK Telecom. No, I wonder if, I think KT is just going to let this they one have go. To Fizz, let this go. Yeah, Fizz is way across the side of the map, and they're just not in a position right now to fight that. I mean, Ryu still does not have that Lich Bane. Still waiting for that one. And I think this is a smart decision. You want to farm up Ryu. He did have a big wave at that top turret. Yeah. And let him get some more gold. Let him get in a better position to carry. Score now has that Trinity Force as well. So there we go. There's the Lich Bane. He's got his first big ticket item, Piglet picking up that Blade of the Ruin King as well. So, yeah. But things should be a little more even. And there's where you see the 200% damage on that new Trinity Force with the Sheen Proc really taking effect. Massive chunk out of Piglet right there in the trade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like KT just hit a big power spike between the Lich Bane, the, tr the Trinity Force. The Aegis as well, very important yeah. now. Kakao. Insect also has a Spirit Visage too, very tanky. Uh, once they get their ults back up, they may try and force a fight right here. That aura going to do a whole hell of a lot against SK Telecom's AoE coming out of Zyra, coming out of Gragas, coming out of Singed. Absolutely. In the meantime, SKT with uh, still a bit of a lead here in game number one. Now, if we remember back to our finals a week ago, the KT Bullets did win game one and game two and then ended up, ended up losing three in a row to lose the series. If SKT takes the first game this time around, I wonder, I wonder what that'll ha what'll happen to the mentality for KT. Well, KT's used to that looks tasty. having to come back. They already came back at the best of five in the quarterfinals of Champion Summer against Blaze. That's right. Come here, come to the Yongsan Esports Stadium and eat your chicken. We allow food and drink. It's a movie theater. You can go buy some popcorn. Yeah, we haven't seen that as much lately. The fans need to, the fans that were doing that before must not be showing up right now. Maybe they're in school or something because that was so smart. Go get like a bucket of popcorn from the movie theater down the, down a couple of floors and then come watch champions. Perfect. All right, well, Insect about to walk into Impact yes, and Piglet. He is, gets flipped immediately here. Taunts over the wall, gets condemned on the other side of the wall. That was interesting. And Kakao, yeah, everybody jumping over walls here. It's like a parkour festival in the jungle right now. <laughs> it's exactly how I would describe it. That's right. Well, you can see Insect, though, since he did get that spirit message first, he's only really suited to split push against Sin, so that's why he's taking so much damage from Piglet on quite early here. That's going to be a problem. It really is limiting the KT Bullets' strategic options of how to deal with the pressure coming out of SK Telecom because they only have certain favorable lane-to-lane -lane matchups against the split push right now. Um, and Insect has to be pretty much against Impact if he wants to be doing anything at this point. Yeah. Well, a bit of passivity now from both teams. Playing it safe coming into this mid-game. And SKT. We'll see who makes the first move here. Have the bot versus bot once again. Both bottom turrets still up actually at this point. And Kakao using that extra gold that he's got this game in order to buy an orb as well and start clearing out their own jungle. They've got to make idea. sure 
that SK Telecom can't make rotations because it's so easy for SK Telecom to either remove you from turrets with Frogus and Singe flip you out from underneath or simply dive them and tank all the turret hits with Singe just getting scarier and scarier and have Vayne follow up and chase you down. Yeah. Well, just farming going on, still in the spot lane. Piglet through the 100 acre lane. Still trying to just wait for those opportunities. Thingy though, it's gonna recall, looks like. And for the KT bullets, uh, they Zyra's a really dangerous pickup for for Pumandu here, and it's one of the reasons why they did so well in the finals against the Bullets. I'm a little bit surprised that we haven't seen oh. more of a priority on wow. that ban, considering KT Bullets love to ban Zyra against Frost. Yeah, I think we'll. I think they're kind of feeling each other out still at this point. I mean, it's been a week since they've played. There's been changes. I think KT and SKT just kind of want to gauge each other in this first game and just kind of see where each team is at and kind of make decisions from there. Oh. Impact goes back, picks up that Negatron Cloak as well, so he's going to be pretty handily winning duels against Insect's Shen right now. Insect really needs a lot more HP in order to deal with this situation, and Impact pretty significant, pretty far ahead, as we can see. There's the Phosphorus Bomb taking a look at what score is leveled up, pretty standard stuff, Phosphorus Bomb into Gatling Gun with that one point at Valkyrie. Yep, makes sense. Really only need the Valkyrie for the escape initially. Throughout most of the game, actually. Big so, lead for Faker still in that mid lane. Yeah, Ryu has been able to do some decent farming, though, and uh, he's at least starting to get some of these important items. He's starting to get that magic penetration, and this is dangerous right now with that Lich Bane, even with only that Lich Bane, I should say, and will only get more dangerous as the AP starts to pile up. That Zonia's Hourglass comes in next, which is critical for allowing Fizz to survive the burst, wait for his cooldowns to come off rotation, and then right. go into round two, but oh. Insect in trouble. Yeah, they're trying to come in, trying to condemn it against the wall, didn't end up working, they got the flash, Insect on the run, there's the flip, they get him back up from under turret, and he goes down, a kill to Faker. Nice gank. Yeah. Really nice. Well, score trying to push up this. Oh, there's the ultimate, Zyra a two-man ultimate. Akrashen over the top, though. Meanwhile, more fighting in that top lane. Ryu coming in, trying to get some kills. Piglet going down. They're not done yet. They're going after Impact now. Impact on the run. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, Faker and Bengi coming in as well. Fights on both sides of the map right now. Bengi coming in, use that QE. Doesn't have it right now. There's the shield. Comes in, a couple flashes. Cataclysm onto Bengi. Faker just out on the open, killing out Mafa. Killing out Mob, I actually just said that. Score, chasing him away. Is he gonna be able to get there? There's a flash, gets it. Will he make it a double Valkyrie coming in? And does he have the range? Can he do it? Does he have enough bombs to hold it up? With that ultimate, there's a big bomb for the double kill. A beautiful turnaround by Score right there to pick up the double. Incredibly impressive play. I thought Mafa shouldn't have used that flash earlier, but the turnaround, Worked out. Score and Mafa just playing that absolutely perfectly. Yeah. Oh, knowing their limits. And that's the power, too, of the Trinity Force right now. It allows you to burst down people so quickly. And if you've got those rockets loaded up on Corky, you can just continually get those Sheen procs. He was out of auto range in the end for the final kill, of course. But before that, just taking huge chunks out that gets up the dragon, and guess what? The bullets are in the lead. That's right, doing what bullets do. And here we go, let's watch that fight in the top lane. Yeah, just absolute insanity, and that's what the Lich Bane will do. They start chasing impact right here. Gets slowed up a little bit, but Ryu dashing in, and they are able eventually to deal with impact right here. A few more flips and standing in poison, but. It, it's just not enough to actually kill either Ryu or Kakao this time, especially yeah. because, again, that that was already finished. And here we go, right over the Aegis was already finished, rather. Here we go, score coming up, using that flash, getting the auto off, and then having those rockets, enough of them loaded up, saved up right here. Of course, not getting the Sheen, rockets aren't on him. Yep, the big one in the end, an impact coming in on a Ryu here. They do have Baker right there. They're gonna come in, nice explosive cast, but it gets dodged. Shen coming in on top of Ryu. They're gonna turn it around, but here comes Bengi. Can he save Baker? Ryu pursuing, they get it. It's gonna be one for one. Yeah, big shutdown gold from Ryu there. Yeah. So that's going to help line impacts Wallet, but Score and Kakao 
In the meantime, putting a lot of pressure on the spotlight. Only Piglet's there. This is a very dangerous situation for Piglet. He cannot afford to get locked down by Assault Battery and killed by Corky. Yeah, he, underneath the turret isn't quite as safe as it used to be. Well, and in that fight up to, up there, too, when they were trying to chase that Singed, I, that's the power of getting that early lock at that early Aegis on Kakao, was he was able to mitigate a lot of that damage, even against a squishy assassin, assassin rather, uh, like Ryu's Fizz. Yeah. Now the gold's still fairly even across the board. It's still two to two for turrets. And look at that, we actually see some uh, magic penetration coming down for Corky as well, so. Oh. A little bit of an interesting build here from Score. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd have to imagine that would maybe help a little bit with those very early level Phosphorus bombs for Crazy yes. Lanes. I'd Certainly imagine that's the idea. Power that up pretty significantly. Yeah. And blue buff. Going to be taken by Ryu once again. Cal stands an award because, hey, it's kind of fun to do that sometimes. Well, the KT Bullets doing a nice job of coming back in this one. We saw them down early in two games yesterday against Frost, but they just managed to grind out enough intelligent strategic decisions, enough intelligent rotations in order to pull the games back into their favor. And the yeah. games that they were losing really, they ended up winning quite decisively. Well, I mean, I feel like from KT, we always just see good, solid fundamentals. You know, just really good decision-making, objective control and all that. And if you don't give away a lot of kills to those playmaking type teams, you know, you're going to be able to come back. You're going to be able to enter into the late game with at least, you know, even if not maybe even a little bit ahead. Yeah. And I love this Fizz pick against the Gragas too. We've seen Ryu just be able to dodge those very critical explosive casks because if they don't land on him, Vigor as Gragas doesn't have a lot of other tools to get rid of Fizz, to burst him down. He needs to hit with several abilities in order to be able to do that. Um, and Ryu just so slippery. Yeah, he's got that Zonia's as well now. That's even worse, actually. That's, and you know, yeah. the fact that Ryu is now able to come back into this game despite being outlaid and outplayed early on by Faker in order to collect these two very important items, I don't know if uh, SK Telecom is going to be able to stop the KT Bullets anymore simply because we have Ryu playing so well on Fizz over the last few days. And once he can survive that burst. Oh, impact. Flipping score here. He may be in a little bit of trouble. Impact getting Chase score on the poison, though. Needs to be very careful. Man, he went down really quickly from that. Well, Impact also has Thorn Mail, so score doing yeah. a lot of damage to himself right there, exactly. actually. And so turning that Trinity Force and that big burst damage you get, but SK Telecom's doing what we frequently frequently see the bullets do and try and sneak a Baron here. Yeah, it seems like they know though. Everybody from KT Bullets coming up, but it's a pick. They want to set up a fight here. There's Kakao, Ryu on the other side. The ward spots them though. And there's it, there it is, home guard coming in. Oh, impact, not quite able to get the flip. Oh, actually forces a flash from Kakao. Shen coming in on the top of that. Shen, everybody jumping onto Piglet. He goes down very quickly, cleanses, tries to get away. Insect still chasing. They eventually take him down. Mandu though, oh wow, Mandu does not last very long. Crescendo helps him seal the deal. And KT, what a fight for them. Valkyrie over the wall for a score. Bengi very, very low score. There's a flash for the double kill again. Six, one, and three already on score, and they're gonna go right into Baron. Well, that was pretty much what I expected from that situation, given the big power spike we saw in Fizz from collecting that Sonya's Hourglass. Right. He took so long to kill, got so got a couple rotations of his abilities up right there, and the turnaround coming in. You, it was actually a lot of that too. Was SK Telecom not having a clear target for play calling. They ended up getting a little scattered, not really knowing what to do after the KT bullets split apart right there as they tried to pick up Kakao. Kakao flashing over, Insect saying, hey, let me just ult right onto you there. Able to vault breaker into the back line right on top of Piglet and annihilate him instantly. Now yeah, well that fight worked basically perfectly. Getting Vi and Shen back there immediately. Let's check, check that one out again. Yeah, this here. was great at turnaround. So Kakao comes in, look at this. He gets right on top of oh, Mondu wow. and Piglet. Yeah. And Shen appears shortly after. And this also saves Assault Battery for right now. Stack the CC a little bit, a little bit sloppy right there. But the cleanse comes down anyway. And at this point you can see Fizz just chasing through the line, score raining down missiles and autos from the outside. And uh, Impact just having to try and deal with healing 
for Piglet because of how easily they engaged on that back line. If SK Telecom wants to win this game, they have to find a way to deal with this Vi and not put them in situations where Piglet is just going to die. Yeah. Well, another dragon as well for KT, and suddenly that gold lead is going to go up to about 5k in total after this dragon goes down. And yeah, I feel like we're seeing a very similar situation to what we saw in a lot of games between the KT Bullets and CJ Frost yesterday. They Deja really vu. do have... The KT Bullets have a lot of composure and ability to come back in games. And yes, they were never really down that far, but they, they did chain lose a, a series of objectives there in the early mid-game. Yeah. And that, that can easily turn into a snowball once you get that kind of map control. Well, this is what makes KT really, really scary, is if SK Telecom can't make those plays early and maintain that lead and extend it, then who can? I mean, that this makes KTB, this game specifically, makes KTB look very scary right now. Well, they got a couple pretty high priority picks in the first pick, Shen. You know, we do see the KT bullets on that blue side, so they were able to grab that early. And then they also got Fizz, which Ryu has only just started playing this week since the finals. And they also got Vi, which is a champion that Bengi prioritized very heavily a week ago in this, these two teams' last best of five. So KT always one of the better teams at borrowing strategies from opponents after they see them. Very good at that. A little bit of a siege up in the top lane. And score will just do some more damage to that turret. Yeah, it looks like for now KT going to be content to ward up the enemy jungle. And this is what we were talking about before the game, Noah, which is that these team styles, we see the outplays in lane early on from SK Telecom, but ultimately the KT Bullets better to better able at thinking on, better able at thinking, wow, I'm really, <laughs> really screwed this one up. But, it's the end of the week, uh, man. Yeah, better at thinking on their feet, better at adapting on the fly, better at making good decisions in team Oh, hello. Like, they pick up Mondu and they're gonna get him. No question about that. There's a flash, there's a Zyra ultimate, doesn't help. Shen over the top, they do nearly catch Bengi. Score, Shen coming in on top of him. And meanwhile, Faker coming in, nice explosive cast, pushes Insect far away, Bengi does go down. Two for zero in favor of SKT, or in favor of KT rather. SKT, KT. KT gets the turret too. Well, now the turrets aren't gonna stop falling either, and this is the danger of this Fizz, the Lich Bane just allowing it to deal tremendous damage to towers. Oh wow, look at how fast that goes down. And this inhibitor is gonna be soon to follow. Nothing that SK Telecom can do about this right now. I mean, this is the patch for the KT Bullets. Uh, they love the fast push. Lich Bane, the new Trinity Force. This allows you to push turrets even faster. It's Trinity Infinity. Trinity Infinity. Yeah, so this, coming into the night, I thought this would be a major factor in this series, and uh, I, I, we can already see that taking hold here. Well, I mean, score seven, one, and four right now on Corky, and you know, way back, he was originally known as a very prominent Corky player, and I'm sure he's happy to be able to get that chance to play one of his favorite champions again. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. Always a great Ezreal player as well, too. Yeah, he has said Ezreal is his favorite champion, yeah. and also, He's now 60 CS up on Piglet. Remember, he started this game about 30 CS in the hole. So yeah, one of the point. major mistakes that SK Telecom has made is that they allowed Score to really free farm here. They were trying to create picks with Vayne, running her all over the map, and Score just sat in lane, farmed up, got kills when it was convenient, and then now he's got a ton of items and has that edge in terms of his itemization. Yep. Turn for SK Telecom, but now they need to make these picks. They're too far behind to really fight effectively in a 5v5. They need to try to grab people, and there's Insect. They're gonna give it a shot. Bengi, there's the slow, there's the knockup. Insect trying to get away, gets flipped, doesn't get to taunt, gets stopped. There's the flash, but the condemn is right there. Here comes Ryu, though, right on the piglet. Oh, will he get away? Insect actually escaping the cleanse, though. Ooh, Piglet coming in, firing away at Insect, but now the entire team is here. There's Crescendo, Bengi over the top. Vi coming in with the body slam onto Faker. He needs to try to escape. Shen coming in to keep score alive. There's the taunt, misses Impact. Mafa goes down, but they will, they'll be able to get Impact because of it. Cow. 
and somehow Insect's still alive through all of that, and yeah, not only that, that, but happen? he managed to snipe the kill onto Piglet with his huh. Q as well. And really, that was all about Ryu. Now, SK Telecom, they know they're behind in this game. They're not going to be able to out them. They had to make a pick on the Shen, because if you make a play on any other lane, Shen shows up and ruins you. Right. So, I was the right call for SK Telecom, but Ryu just comes in from the side. He's at the right place at the right time and manages to slow them enough in order to deal with that, flipping him the wrong way a little bit right there, too. Yeah. But look at this. There's Chum the Waters coming in, and he immediately focuses down onto Piglet as well. Ryu tries to get out, pops that Sony's Hourglass to weather the storm of the exhaust. Piglet already used that cleanse, and here he goes. There's a nice play by Maffa coming up. Good three-man crescendo coming in and score. Popping through those bushes, getting the Gatling gun down. Wow. And, you know, and look at that. He comes in. Insect used Stand United at the end to make sure score can stay alive against this thorn mail singed. Yeah, yeah. Mission accomplished. You know, Piglet tried to uh, health steal a little bit off the minions in lane after Insect dived into the bush in the bottom. And if he had chased after them, he might have been able to pick up that kill, even at that low health. It's a close call, though. Really close team fight, though. And Either way. In this situation, you can hardly blame SK Telecom for making that decision. It was the best tactical move against KT Bullet's team comp at this point in time. But and there's Baron and KT going to take that. We'll see how unopposed it is. SK Telecom coming down. They may want to contest it. There's Chum the Waters just slowing up impact a little bit. They'll get that Baron, no problem, though. And this is going to be pretty much the end of this game, Noah. But I a think fantastic so too, yeah. back and forth game here between well, these I two mean, teams. And this is what we've come to, the caliber of game that we've come to expect from when these two telecommunication squads go head to head. Well, I mean, this is really what eSports looks like at the highest level a lot of times, too. It's a very back and forth, very close early in the mid game, and then eventually somebody gets a lead, and it's so hard to knock someone out of that lead position at the highest level. And that's just what we saw today. There's another dragon for KTB. Now with a 10K gold lead. Yeah. Way, way ahead, and five turns to three. Jeez, Gold isn't so, uh, everything, but Look at got score it. this game, 36 minutes in. And wow. you got to remember this guy was having such a hard time early. Yeah. And he somehow bounced back 331 CS in 36 minutes, which considering that he was down at the start of the game is very impressive. Seven, one, and six, and his build is so terrifying. And Mikhail's Crucible also picked up by Mafa. Even Mafa is rich this game, 12 assists. Yeah. So he'll be able to deal with some of that CC coming out of SK Telecom. Well, SKT just trying to keep their leans pushed back as best as they can, but between the Shen split push and the Baron power to rest of the team, I think it's going to be pretty tough. Yeah, the inhibitor well, did just respond, though. Yeah, look at Kakao. Again, we've been talking a lot this game about how he got that early advantage, and he translated that into a thorn mail for himself now. So just trying to shut down Piglet. They know he's the primary threat. If they can survive that one rotation from Faker, they're probably good to go. And Vayne is the one they really have to worry about at that point. Even Insect starting to load up with the Trinity Force. Yeah. Why not? Trinity Infinity. Just allows you to split push even harder, as we're seeing right now. Yep. Gives you a lot more opportunity to take down towers quickly as the KT Bullets start poking around, trying to get some hits on this top lane inhibitor. Impact down in the bot lane. Now we might have a bit of a fight here. We'll see. Damage coming in. There's Vi mixing it up. They really want to get this inhibitor again. Piglet coming in. Trying to put some damage onto Kakao, but Kakao just way too durable right now. Just taking those auto attacks. There we go. Chub the Waters immediately kills Mondu. No ultimate from him. Or actually, no, he didn't barely get it off, I think. Meanwhile, Kakao is dead. Gets in the back lines onto Faker and Banky. Piglet with pretty good positioning here. Comes in to try to help out a bit. Insect though disrupting those back lines. Mafa still alive. Vi coming in. SK Telecom gets a couple kills, but Piglet eventually goes down. Kakao chasing away Bengi. And now Faker trapped by his turret. Double kill for Kakao. And that is going to be the end of the game. I don't see them coming back from that one. Well, they do have Bengi, and they don't have a lot they of do. damage left over. Kakao and Insect well, mostly built for tank, but Insect true. does have that sheen to poke a little bit harder. I'm a little bit surprised they're not shoving more onto this bottom turret. And yeah, there's the rotation coming okay. in. There we go. And so they should be able to get this bottom turret as well. 
Insect very safe here. Mandu coming down to try to be annoying. Mickey comes in with the combo. They should really knock back him on Kakao. Yeah, they're going to actually lose Kakao if they don't back off. And Insect coming back in. They really want it. They get it. They get the turret. Kakao gets locked up, though. Oh, wow. They are sticking around for a long time. But KZ, they, they tend to do this. They do get a bit overly bold in the end. And it worked out this time. But we've seen some games where it's we've worked out. We've seen them lose games not because so good, of yeah. doing things like that. Oh, yeah. And they just had to be cautious there. They didn't have to all in in that situation. They could have simply taken out Mondu and then moved on with their lives. But so they come in right here. Mondu finds himself on the outside, gets hit by that chum the waters, and look how much damage this does to him. Whoa! <laughs> Zyra ult goes down. At this point, they have the opportunity to back off right here. Instead, they decide to go all in with the Shen ultimate, and they start taking a bunch of tower hits as well. They don't heal very well for score either, considering he's where a lot of their gold lead is, resides in terms of items. Once he goes down to that burst from Faker and the chase from Singed, uh, a lot of their advantage vanishes with it. Well, Piglet actually did have a pretty good fight that game. But maybe it's a little too late. Never mind, more fights going on. Bengi a bit wrapped up by Ryu's ultimate. Faker gets taken down by Score and Kakao. There's a double kill for Score already. Ultimate way deep onto Piglet. Kakao a little bit deep in enemy lines there. Bear, uh, gets out with the Vault Breaker. Ryu is there. All right. They're going to keep pushing. Two kills already. Insect trying to defend. Well, trying to defend himself, I guess. And there goes another inhibitor. SK Telecom, even with Piglet up, is going to have a hard time stopping out. There's a crescendo. Immediately cleansed. Piglet gets out. Still more good positioning for him. But in the end, just not enough. Ryu helps Porky pick that one up. Helps score get it. And that is going to absolutely be the end of game number one. There goes the Nexus turrets. There goes the Nexus. And the KT bullets take game one. And styling oh, in styling. the fountain at the end. Ryu with the Manor Zonias to close it out. Six Zonias, man. He's a B-boy. You wouldn't tell by looking at him, but he is. <laughs> Well, a very important first win for the KT Bullets here. Uh, they got to feel good about that one. Coming with momentum, Ryu never feels good about anything. No, he just he just doesn't feel. I'm pretty sure like Kakao and him made a deal where Ryu would just give Kakao, Kakao all of his emotions. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's Insect. Not a bad game on Chet. So SK Telecom with the early lead, having that big big edge in the laning phase and that's a pretty tough pill to swallow if you're that far ahead early uh, in terms of all your solo your lane matchups well i feel like i really feel like that game was a direct continuation of the series we saw in the finals that game looked like a natural progression from game five that we saw last week either way though a victory for the kt bullets they've got the momentum they're two games away from going to the League of Legends Season 3 World Championships. The cow, I think you can't see it because of the headset, but I'm pretty sure he's Vulcan. He's <laughs> let go of all emotions. Okay, well, SK Telecom, being down is no thing to them, we've discovered there. Oh yeah. Easily capable like they did last week. Of Definitely come back. Returning from the brink of defeat, but Speaking only one game back. down. Yeah. You guys come back after this, and we'll see game number two. SK Telecom versus KT Bullets do not go anywhere. <laughs>